fitted the pads the other day. We fitted the harness now, but we're all ready to put it to the thing. Just want to mention these pads. These pads are waffle pads. I think they're the best, far better than cotton. Um, you can stick them in the washing machine, keep them clean, scrub them by hand. They're very durable. We use them um, all the time and they, they last forever, as long as you look after them. They're held on pretty self-explanatory, really. You've got a bit of Velcro here, yeah? And you fit them on. All you want to do is make sure they're the same either side. With some, this down here where it's square, can you see? Some are rounded, but this one's square. With these square ones, sometimes what I do is I'll put another bit of Velcro on myself down the bottom here, just pull, because you can, can sometimes, according to the condition of the horse, how fat it is, basically. And so, you know, you can get a little rub there sometimes off the corner here, but basically all right, yeah. So I'll just come round here and show you traces. We all come up on here with a single. We keep the harness all together. We put it on in one piece. So we don't do things in a conventional way necessarily. So what I'm telling you is the way we do it. Yeah. Whether that suits you or not, that's up to you to decide. One of the conventional ways of, of storing your um, is to roll it around your hand, as I say, like that. Put this end through where your hand came out of, and it'll hold up there like this, reasonably comfortable. Problem is, it will come out, and it can, so when you're leading your horse out, it can catch on something, anything, and then give him a jar for no reason. So what we prefer to do is take it out of the hanger. I'll just mention this, I have mentioned it before, these, all this is, is a piece of inner tube from a car, yeah? This particular harness doesn't come with, hang, you know, with a, with a trace carrier. So we put these in. I think they're absolutely brilliant idea. You know, they could be cut a lot better and made a lot look a lot neater, but they're on there. They support the trace, nice, but they've got a lovely stretch in them, yeah? So you never get any pressure on here at this point, but they'll hold them up. So that's what we use, piece of inner tube from a car. For exercise, no good for the show ring, obviously, is it? But for exercise, like that, why not? You know, it's a, it's a good thing to use. So getting back to these traces, what we do, we have a carabiner on the end. Yep. So there's the carabiner, yeah? Just clips on. And it lives there forever. If I take this trace, the other side, I just take it out of the carrier, this side. So we could roll that up like we did the other, we could hang it up there. The problem is, when you hang them up there, you've got a big loop, look. Can all spang his belly, has got a fly on there, can put his foot through. So just to be on the safe side, what we do, we fit a carabiner to the end, as I say, like this. And then we bring it down and just clip it here. Yeah? Just on there. Now that's tight to its body, be the same both sides. The chances of it getting caught are reduced drastically. He's not going to step on it and he can't put his foot through it. And very easy to undo when you're putting them to. Put it over and connect it straight to your vehicle. So that's how we do it. I don't say that's, that's right and it's not the conventional way or the recognised way, but it's what we do here. Okay, so we fit the pads. We spoke about this these corners here. So all I do with the corners is just put a bit another bit of Velcro like that, you can buy it off the shelf, buy it anywhere, buy it in, in Tesco's, I think, or that sort of shop, and just put it around there to keep the corners off. The same here. It very seldom happens, but it doesn't hurt to have a piece of Velcro for a metre, it costs a couple of quid, you know. It's just a good thing to have. Okay, there's a good boy. That's a good lad. So, we're going to talk briefly about the vehicle now. This is his vehicle. Vehicles come as standard, as does harness. This harness came from Heartland, and it's it's different sizes. Because of the shape and size of the horse, it's different sizes. So we've got some bits that's small cob, um, you know, some that's pony. And they'll do the same, you know, with the shelves. So for instance, the shelves that came with this weren't any good for this particular pony. Nothing wrong with the shelves, it's lovely, just a little bit narrow. 
so we asked them could you send us some pony ones um, you know one size up so they you know, they sent us these so this is all ready to go now we've had it on him it's fine everything's good we've got our quick releases that were purchased at the same time when the carriage was purchased so we're ready to go so come over my darling boy come over a little bit just stand over oh stand still now stand still that's it just there good boy i'm going to do this myself most people would have two people to do it okay so i'll bring this over down i've got this quick release this side open and ready to receive the shaft and i'm just putting it in here and then i'll come around that side and show you everything so this is the way we do it again I know that someone will say you don't do it like that well yes that's how we do do it it doesn't mean to say it's the acceptable way so or the recognized way so we put this up the quick release there now on these straps here you have adjustment so we could put it there in that hole and we could have put it in the hole below the strap here can you see there's another one there so this tug could go down or it could go up in this particular instance this is the right place for this pony if we was down any lower it would be very near the bottom of the pad and possibly be uncomfortable and you could get some rub here yeah and some movement so this is just nice the way it is these bridgings also can come now at a reasonable angle can you see so there's a slight pull down we don't want it tremendously down because it puts a lot of weight on their their back and we don't want it up high here where it allows this to ride up so it'll keep the angle right coming down there yep okay next thing we're going to do before we put the is to connect the traces so we would unclip them bring them through Put them through the carrier, which as I say is just a piece of inner tube from a car. Costs you nothing, pick it up anywhere, you, you know, probably got one laying around home. So, okay, that goes on there. Yep, stand up, my darling boy. That's a good boy. Now, all the time I get people saying to me, how far do you want this back? Well, we could have it closer, definitely without any question. But what I always think is, if horse is going uphill, muddy slope, you know, uh, off-roading, whatever, green lanes, if they slip back, they can strike themselves here on the swingle tree or the shelves. So why not have it a little bit more distance? You could certainly have it way up there like that no problem but and you can see there you can see there that you could strike the hook and like that so we just have them like that there's plenty of room there it doesn't impede if you watch my films you'll see some of the shelves much longer than this and we still drive them around obstacle courses um, when we're training them etc around the arena and it's just better for us. You could have them shorter, but if I, I owned this pony and I was going out on a Sunday, that's how it'd look. So, we've got our traces on now. Now we're gonna fix these bridging straps. So what I'll do with the bridging straps on this harness, you can put this, this strap here, this loin strap, anywhere you like. So it can go here, or here so I've only got one strap so I'm only going to use one of a choice of three so I put these through there just through there so just when you're moving your horse around from the stable to the vehicle you can put them pull, pull them through again keeps it all clean and tidy very easy to take out yeah do you want to cut these well that's personal choice personally myself you never know um, 
whether you're going to change ponies or whatever's going to happen. So once you've cut it, you can't make it longer, can you? So I'm just wrapping it round. I'll put it back through itself there. Can you see? So it's round, back through itself. Of course, I've already used this harness. I know where this has got to go to be right. So we're in there. Now I could, I could take that round again, one more hole, if I wanted to. But that's clean and tidy. You can see then, when the bridging comes into play, you can see the pull is nice. If I had it up here, it would be pulling up. If I had it down here, it would be too tight. So that's just the right place, again, for me. So we know we, we can only have a certain amount of movement. I'm going to go and fix the other side now in exactly the same fashion. So now, when I, when I push the vehicle back to tighten the traces, There, I'll push it back, the trace is now tight. This is remaining exactly where it should be on the pad. Yeah. And there's room at the back here. Stand up, babe. Stand up, he's a good boy. Stand up. There's four inches, can you see? There, basically a fist, man's fist. Four inches here. And on the belly band again, underneath here, four inches. Yeah. So that you can't have the, the horse too tight in the eyes because he'd be sore, wouldn't he? If you pulled all this tight together, his breast collar against the bridging. So we've got just enough movement now. You can see how this works. As it comes forward, the bridging will come into play. Stand still, darling. But also the pad will. Can you see? The, see the pad moving? Taking a little bit of the strain. Nice padding. Nice padding on the bridging. So there you are. Can you see? Lovely. So that's fitting. How we fit, I should say. A set of harness. Just going to talk briefly about the bridle. The eye wants to be in the centre of the bridle. Now, it's very diff not difficult when you've done it hundreds of times, but what you've got to do to find whether his eye is sitting in the centre of the bridle is just do this, fold it back, and then you can line the, the eyeball up itself, being there, into the centre of the bridle, yeah? So you can see there when I close it over. This doesn't want to be too tight against this because it will rub his head rub his, his skull just on his on his on his brow yeah so just above his eye all these new harnesses have a piece of wire in you can just push them in like that and that keeps the, the thing so what I don't like about these it's in all harness now is the mere fact that if you're going along and he brushes on a hedge or anything you know that he brushes as you're going along for whatever reason that can come round there and pull right back like that and obviously you see the carriage behind him. It doesn't bother the horses we break because we, we do it anyway. We pull the blinkers right back, we have them way down too low, way too high, so that if they're ever incorrectly fitted, come up darling, so you can just pull them together like that. You can punch some more holes in here if you want to, but this one for this pony is nice. Uh, we have a bit, everybody knows we use rubber bits, and it just sits in the mouth there. You can just see, oh my darling, just like that, yeah? Just so it just creases, exactly the same as you fit any other bit. So that's fitting a set of harness. So now we're all ready to go. We're just gonna put the reins on. I never put the reins on and bring the horse out the stable with the reins on, as is the conventional way of doing it. Again, I think if the reins catch on anything, just when you're coming through the door, coming out of your stable, wherever you catch it, the horse gets it straight away on the on the bit in its mouth, you know, pulled and jerked against these bars, which seems silly. So <clears throat> we have an underhaul, we also have our collars. So this horse is, is held there securely while we put him to. Other people will tell you, you've got to stand here and hold the reins like this, yeah? in front somebody all the time at his head well we break thousands of horses and we do it exa exactly like this um, the reason being that our horses are young in training you could have someone standing here and they'd be walking and pushing them you know and they could be awkward to hold so this is the way we choose to do it I'm only really telling you about fitting a set of harness how we do it why we do it and how it should fit so we have the collar on here, the under halter, yeah? The two are connected together. 
and you know that's the way we do it i can't i keep saying that because there's always people going to say to me no you don't do it like that well i've been doing it a long time like this and it works for me that's all i can say really so there you go pony's already put two ready to go this pony's fresh broke um a lovely little pony he's a nice little fella so his name's toffee lovely little pony and he's a little bit round as you can see you know he's only got to look at food and he's uh yeah. and he had locking stifles but we massaged him the way we do i've spoke about that before and uh he works away now he's lovely so they're a little bit sticky he stifles still tiny bit but no discomfort he's happy he does his job so he's got the sticky stifles and he's a little bit round and his name's toffee so he's ended up Ree's named it not me Ree who works with me has named it a sticky toffee pudding that's his full title now <laughs> good boy There's a smile on my face every time I hear that sound The rhythm of the hoops as they touch the ground And there's no better place I'd rather be Than with my safe, confident horse And there's no better place I'd rather be Than with my safe Confident horse that's had